So how does one go about setting goals? Because sometimes you hear about these things like set a date, set a number, uh, make it, conceive it, see it every day. How do you go about, go about making goals that, that really give you a goal to work towards? I often talk about the symphony of success. Mm -hmm. What does success sound like to you? Not what success means to me, not what success means to your parents, to your friends, to the system. What does success sound like to you? What is your symphony of success? When you hear successful, living a successful life, what comes to mind? For a musician, it may be, be really good at playing an instrument. For me, it may be developing a phenomenal business. Mm -hmm. For an athlete, it may be developing a great athletic career. What is your symphony of success? It really depends on the individual. That's why there's no one spectrum of success. There isn't one number to achieve that defines success. That is my definition of success, but that is for me. Why? Because every person beautifully has been created to have their own specificity. So you have your own dreams, you have your own ambitions, you have your own symphony of success. You need to find that. And how do you find it? From deprogramming, from the bullshit, that everybody else has told you of what it means to be successful. Mm -hmm. You need to stop listening to others and start listening to yourself. But the problem is nobody knows how to listen to themselves. They're scrolling on TikTok, music on loud every day, when they're driving fucking radio turned on, when they're home scrolling on their phones, when they ask for opinions, they ask for opinions from other people, they ain't even asking opinions from themselves. They're yeah. going to a fucking psychologist, asking a psychologist for wisdom and advice on how to live their lives and they're paying this motherfucker money and all you are is a client so might as well keep this person sick as long as possible or deranged or in the loop of coming and sitting on the chair why because hey, they're paying for the fucking mortgage when was the last time you sat down and defined your symphony of success what does success look like to you to me it's not having a ton of properties and living in a big fat box and having a ton of supercars no to me it's freedom and i found that early on Now I just am able to experience a different level of freedom with more toys and more things and I can bring people along that journey with me to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. That is my symphony of success. And if I was to cater or falter to what other people told me what success was, then I have gone from successful to unsuccessful. Okay. But you say freedom. When you come to America, do you say you actually experience that freedom right but then you already achieved your goal and then you want to maintain it but that's like a happy person that wants to stay happy right he's gonna do everything to keep his happiness but that actually makes him more sad because you cannot always stay happy all the time how does that go with freedom because sometimes you have to maybe work like you said Like you're sleeping on the couch and you have to work, you have to do door-to-door uh, door -door sales, you have to do other stuff. That's not actually really freedom, right? So what was your purpose then when you came to the US? Like you experienced freedom, but what goal was next for you then? Well, you defined two different things. You, The first thing you mentioned was happiness. Yeah. Happiness is an emotion, so it comes and goes. So anybody that's pursuing something that's fleeting Mm. will not be able to hold on to it. Why? Because you cannot be a happy person all the time. So to pursue happiness is an unachievable goal. But to pursue freedom, freedom is a state of mind, right? Freedom mm -hmm. is a state of being. It's not an emotion. I can still be sad and be free. Mm -hmm. mm. I can still be happy and be free. So if somebody that's like, well, I want to be a happy person. Well, good luck, bro. <laughs> mm. Good luck. Good luck being free, right? Good luck being happy. It's two different things. This idea of being happy is this concept that people have been sold, right? That life is about happiness. Mm -hmm. But what if life wasn't about happiness? What if life is about experiencing every aspect and every emotion that life has? Wouldn't you want to experience the full set and range of emotions that life has to offer you? The sadness, the heartbreaks, the joy, Right? You can't have happiness without sorrow. You can't have pleasure without pain. And to neglect one thing is to neglect life. So why would you neglect these things? And in order for you to achieve freedom, you need to be able to understand that you need to be 
unwaveringly decided to enjoy every aspect of, ex of, of the experience of life. And the problem is most of the aspects of experiencing life fully are haltered or deterred or slowed down by the busyness of life, the unpro unproductive things of life, the nine to five. The only reason you have a nine to five, people are like, well, I have responsibilities. You establish these responsibilities on yourself. Mm -hmm. You decided how much you were going to pay for rent. You decided how much you were going to pay for that car. You have a kid, you decide to fuck that bitch. Mm -hmm. It's your responsibility. Every, every aspect of your life, every responsibility that you have is self-imposed for the most part. There are exceptions. So your question is how much responsibility do you want? Look at a fucking dog, bro. Zero responsibilities. The lives happy as hell. <laughs> yeah, true, 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 there's true. a there's an ancient proverb that says, "Walk like a turtle, sleep like a dog, and you'll be happy." Mm. So I wonder. It seems to me that you've, on the one hand, taken a lot of time to um, develop yourself on the business side. You've made money. You've had some very successful businesses, which takes up quite a lot of time. But you also seem to me to have uh, a lot of knowledge, or at least have a lot of have done a, a lot of self-reflection to understand more about the world as you see it and the world as you think it works. Did you have time in the time when you came to the U.S. You started the grind, as most people call it. Did you have time to reflect as well in that time to really get to know yourself? Or did this come at a later time when you had some money and took time to reflect on yourself? Because what I notice is, even though I'm an entrepreneur and I try to be free, as we all want to be, freedom is the, the name of the game, I end up getting into my own rat race, which is, even though I'm not working nine to five, the rat race I created for myself, which is working five to nine, <laughs> flipped it around. And I end up not having time to reflect on what I really want or really want to do and things slowly start to become business goals instead of living out of purpose. Did you always have the time to live from purpose and reflect? Or how did you position your time to be able to do that? You're wearing a nice suit today. Thank you. Your hair looks good. Thank you. Did you look in the mirror? I think I did, yeah. Reflect comes from the reflection of the mirror. Mm-hmm. You had time for the outer canvas. You have time for the inner canvas. It's all what you deem a priority, my friend. True. How did you go about that when you were, for example, uh, doing e-commerce, which I can imagine is quite a busy job or a busy business to be engaged in? How did you position your time? Did you put in an hour every day to reflect on yourself or was it just a conscious thing which you did whenever it came to you. There's two types of ways of meditating. You can say, hey, I'm going to go sit on this yoga mat, close my eyes and try to clear my mind. Or you can be in a state of meditation. What this means is that you're consciously aware. You're always reflecting. You talk bad to an employee, you yell at the employee. Hmm. Why did I do that? Where did that come from? Oh, I lost money on a trade. Why do I feel anxious? Why did I feel like I had to place that trade? You see somebody driving in a nice car, you get a little bit jealous. Why am I jealous? Where is, this, where is this feeling coming from? So you can either meditate upon things or you can live in a state of meditation whereby you are always reflecting on who you are and what is being displayed because the world shows you who you are if you watch and pay attention. Why? Because you are a reflection of it. So what you see in the exterior is a reflection of what's happening inside, mm -hmm. but you can change what's inside. So this idea of not having any time, it's most likely an, a time allocation thing of time, energy, and attention. If you have time, energy, and attention to reflect on the internal, then you'll look extremely nice.